It's just so nice. All Ooh, right, we live. here we are. Welcome, welcome. All right, Liliana, okay. when I get this shared on your feed, uh, you can welcome anybody as they come in and we'll get rolling with the show here in a minute. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Reality Practice Q&A live with Joe Kramer and Liliana Lacruz. We are so honored um, for you to be here with us, guys. And today we're going to talk about the subject that many of us are facing at the moment, but some of us are not acknowledging, which is jumping timelines. <laughs> we're so excited to be here. We want to apologize because last week we couldn't make it. Joe was traveling and I was planning my journey to come to the West Sussex as well. And I'm having a great time in here. I feel a different energy all around and that's why I'm so happy. <laughs> and I don't want this happiness to end. <laughs> because jumping timelines is that, is the state that we are in. And this is where everything manifests. So while Joey is uh, sharing in all the networks that he has, uh, today we want to talk about something really important, that is how to jump those timelines, and how it is so hard for us to understand where we are, at, when we are at with certain environments, and how those environments affect us uh, when we jump or up or down timelines, if that makes sense. <laughs> yes, yes, it does. There's a lot to jumping timelines and let's see here. Yeah. I really want my, um, our audience to get involved today, to um, come up and make questions because I've been watching some, um, one of our net, network from our network, Ricky Godal is really, really good. Um, as we teach, we learn every day, and uh, I'm so excited about everything that this group is doing already for everybody. We are trying to give a massive amount of value to everybody that is, uh, you know, an awakening stage, and that's what we want to talk about. The uh, we're going to talk about the jumping timelines because when we get through the awakening stages, um some of us get stuck really hard and i'm one of them that i've been like on that flight for a long time and it's slowly started to uh, i start to understand why these patterns keep coming back so i would love to you know start the show i don't know if there's anybody there but i would love to start the show by welcome again everyone and i want to thank you for all your support every week we are honored that you guys are resonating with us. If you're watching this every Tuesday, it's because you're looking for something. Uh, but let me assure you that everything in the energy field, in your quantum field, is all inside of you. You are your hologram and you are your universe, whether you realize it or not. And this is what we want to give you value every week because everything that is in there is in here, <laughs> if that makes sense. Yes, yes. So, uh, let's welcome. We got Tina's joining in today. I see she's on. Uh, we've got some more viewers. I don't know who they are, though, uh, unless they chime in. But welcome, everybody. Again, like Liliana said, thanks for joining us today on Reality Practice Live Q&A. Today, we're going to be discussing the idea of shifting realities, how we actually can do that and how it's happening basically every day, every second, we just don't realize it because we live in the world that we perceive as the present moment. And, you know, I, I did a lot of brainstorming on it this morning and last night, and it was one of those, I, I'll share kind of, you know, my thoughts on how we're actually shifting realities. And I think it's happening every single day. I think of it as when we wake up every morning, we're being reprogrammed. It's like, you know, we're, we're just a computer system and each morning it has to reboot itself and it reboots yep. itself with the memories we have downloaded of our past. And every morning it's exactly the same. And well, it's however we choose it to be. It may, it's always going to seem like it was the same as the previous day, 
but there's nothing that says we're not creating a brand new reality each and every morning already pre-programmed, you know, if our systems reboot, it reboots with the same thoughts, the same memories that we believe we've had. For instance, you know, if I want to become a billionaire right now, I'm obviously not a billionaire, but tomorrow yeah. I could wake up and completely reboot my entire operating system and all the files would be downloaded and I would shift realities potentially into that of being a billionaire. Now, everything in my reality would obviously have had to have changed for me to become a billionaire, but every memory from there, you know, backwards would be implanted and downloaded into my mind. So my family, uh, you know, everything I'd ever done prior to that to attain the billion dollars would seem as though I had lived those, even though they weren't real or maybe they were. That's what's being imprinted and programmed into our mind to believe that the past was real. So it goes into kind of that quantum level of infinite realities. And we're just trying to harmonize. We're trying to find that frequency that we want to ride on because each reality has a specific frequency that we have to align to. And when we're resonating at that frequency, that's the current reality we're in the present moment. Now, if we want to be a billionaire, if we want to own a yacht, if we want to start a company, whatever that may be, that reality is there, but it's resonating at a slightly different frequency. So, or frequency. So therefore every morning, for instance, we can wake up if we understand how to reprogram our minds and how to tune into that specific frequency. When we wake up in the morning, we can already be in that desired state and already be in that reality, for instance, but we don't know how to quite, how to do it quite yet. You know, I think we're doing it every day subconsciously. We just, re we don't recognize it for what it is. Cause if my entire reality shifted to something different tomorrow morning, I wouldn't know that it shifted to a different reality. I would only yeah. know what I wake up being pre-programmed with as the reality that I'm living if that makes yeah. sense to everybody. Yeah, yeah. I will add to that, that jumping in the timelines is absolutely necessary in order for us to step up into a higher version because some of us don't understand where this the higher version reached. And we think everything is out, way out there somewhere. And now we we always been influenced by our own old programming. And this is the uh, trouble that most people are facing because Every day, as Joey said, we wake up and our brain goes back to the old program. And this is like sort of a test. We Every day we sort of a test. We have to understand where we've been tested from the day before. If the next day we're going to wake up, let's say you had a high energy level the day before, and we say tomorrow I'm going to be just that person because today my day was absolutely brilliant. But the next day you don't wake up the same. Is your program is testing you if you're going to be on a high frequency uh, that day when you wake up from that high frequency that you had on the day before. So sometimes we think that the universe is outside of us, but everything is inside of us. And uh, I just, there is nothing, nothing outside, absolutely nothing outside. So when we ascend to our higher selves, we are not longer in that program that we believe that we, we, we've been taught from a very young age. And unconditional love is part of the, who we are. But every day we forget that because we wake up with feelings like uh, most of us, we're gonna have to go to our jobs, to our realities, and we kind of forget those, uh, um, the program, we kind of forget that we are going back to the program because we are having to have those tasks, daily tasks that we have to do every day. Now, when we rewire our brain and we switch off, and I'll give prime examples of myself because I've always speak from my experience, by the way. I can assure you that I've been living in simultaneous timelines for quite some time now. From the awakening stages until ascension is a long way to go. And this week I have so many, and I'm so sorry that I couldn't reply to everyone because now that we are working on this um, networking that Joe is going to announce uh, very soon. Um, 
the global network, the Audi Practice Network, we don't have time to respond every single one every day. So that's why we're doing this for everyone, so we can, in a vast audience, in one show, uh, respond to your queries, and uh, ho hopefully you get to understand where we're coming from. Because once you go from the stages of awakening, you start to absorb everything that you didn't observe before. You're deprogramming your old belief systems, you're deprogramming your, your, your ways of that you operated all your life. And the awakening is not just that, oh, I woke up to something, that's it. It's not, that's it. That's far from it. And this is the, the most difficult part when we have this awareness that we now are awakened to these realities. We, we want to be aware of these things and we become to accept these things as the new version. So now I become this person that I'm aware of my higher self, I can operate on my higher version, and I'm no longer that small person that I've been taught that I could do only this limitation because my body can only do this much and my mind can only do this much. If I don't make sense, we are grateful and, help and happy to help one by one on the coaching programs that we are going to put out very soon. We're going to have packages to suit all pockets, by the way. And we want to teach you about your energy field that is within you so you can have this awakening with this awareness and acceptance that is going to come to at some stage in your life to the highest version, which is a lot of people talk a lot of attraction, which is the alignment of everything that you're learning. Most of us are not yet aligned because we are processing the new version of ourselves. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. And you, you made an important point there that shifting reality, shifting timelines is fully under our control and it's happening all the time, but we're doing it subconsciously. This is a, this is a matter of awareness. This is a matter of knowing and being aware that we're consciously creating timelines, we're consciously creating decisions. It's our choice on which timeline we want to be on and how we want to resonate at that on that timeline, on that reality. So we're choosing either consciously or subconsciously what direction and what reality we want to live out and be on at that moment in time. So it's 100% about awareness and understanding, recognizing that we hold this power, number one. Number two, you said it also, acceptance. We have to be able to accept this as yeah. fact. We have to know that this is the way science is proving through quantum physics. This is what's happening, whether they wanna admit it and tell us it or not is, is irrelevant. We know because we, like you said, this is our personal experiences that we speak from. And these are the things mm -hmm. that have happened to us. So we know yep. that these things are possible because we've lived through them. We've witnessed them. We've experienced them. And we're still growing. We're still learning. <laughs> All of yes. you are, you know. So do we know everything? Absolutely not. Do we have no. this? <laughs> no, and we never will. No. But the point is we become aware to our power. And we've accepted that obligation. It's our duty now yeah. as conscious yeah. creators to create from love. So which timeline do you want to be on? And what frequency do you want to resonate at? That's really the bottom line of it all. Uh, you know, I, I wrote down some other stuff here. I think it's, and this is an interesting one, and this plays really into my personal experience. And it's, I think it was Neville. Goddard that spoke about how every seven years we shift realities like we're shifting our we're shifting into a new reality every seven years or approximately every seven years so with that being said I actually went back through and kind of timelined my life up until this point and it's really astonishing it's it's amazing how those seven years lined up in my life you know because for me I don't remember, I remember very little of my past. Like it has always been very hard for me to remember my past from my childhood to my teenage years. Do I remember moments? Of course. 
uh, do I see them in pictures? And it's like, oh yeah, I remember that. Consciously though, I can't go back and remember almost anything from my past. It's almost as if it's been like wiped away, wiped clear and erased from my memory in a sense. So that in and of itself is kind of a, you know, that's a whole nother topic, what's going on there. But when I started to look at this idea of we're jumping dimensions, jumping realities every seven years or so, I started looking at, okay, from the time I was born to the age of seven, I lived with my mom and my grandma, uh, you know, single mom. And that was my childhood. Then around the age of seven to eight years old is when my stepdad came into the picture and he married my mom and I had a new baby sister. So from age of eight to 14, I had this new shift, this new reality where I now had a dad, I had a sister, we moved. This was, you know, a great time in my life, right? Completely different from the first seven years. Well, then at the age of 14, 15, after that next seven year cycle, that was when I went into high school and I started developing my Tourette syndrome. I started, you know, getting into alcohol and drugs and, you know, for the next seven years, all through college was kind of a whole different reality for me. It was, it was just a different life than what I'd known the previous two seven stages. So then after college, that last year, right around 21, 22, that's the first time I attempted suicide. And everything from that point in my life, that 22 years to 28 years old, was kind of tumultuous. It was, I was lost at that time. And I didn't really know who or what I was, what my purpose was. I was just going through the motions, uh, you know, working a job I hated. But that was that moment I was in. And that the, towards the end of that's when I met my first wife and we had our first child. And that kind of capped off that next seven years that I was in. And then it was from the age of 29 to 35 uh, was when I went through a divorce. I became an entrepreneur. I changed my entire reality. I took all the dreams, all the thoughts I'd had those previous seven years where I was lost and didn't know who and what I was, what I wanted to do, that time between 29 to 35, that was really when I honed in on the fact that I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I wanted to start my own business. I remarried and met my wife, April, and we started our own company uh, at that point in time. Then the last, we hit another seven year cycle, and that would have been in 2014 when I was 36 years old. And the last seven years has been building this company with my wife and discovering myself, you know, awakening, really. Awakening. Seven years awakening. has been my awakening. So I've shifted entirely different realities over the past seven years because I started to understand and learn and who we are. And now we are in 2022, which is the start last year and this year is that start of a new yeah, year cycle again, which coincidentally brings us to where we're at now. And when no, reality practice started and this whole because you are lying, phase though. of my life. So for the next seven years, this is the reality I'm living in. This is what I'm creating. I brought you into it. I brought so many amazing people into this reality. And this is the seven year span I'm in now. What, what's the future hold after that seven years? You know, I don't know where I'll shift to at that point. But for me, the idea of these seven year shifts, it really aligns like this what you're going to be aligned perfectly to a yeah. new shift in reality each and every seven years for me. I don't know if anybody else has had similar, you know, if you really think about it and go back and kind of do the timeline on it if anybody else's timelines would work out similar. I, I'd really be interested to know on that. It's absolutely amazing what you just said, because our potential gets so limited because of our environment, our tribes, our uh, everything around us, basically. And that's what you said, the mentioned, like the seven year cycle. I mean, I am into the seven year cycle now. By today, I met somebody and it was my life was completely my dreams were shattered. My life was completely the opposite that I was planning. 
mainly because of my environment. When we say about jumping timelines, I really want anybody that is listening to this today, because I can't see who's there, as you know, um, to today uh, to learn something from me, how I jump timelines and how I'm doing it today, okay? Because I'm living in simultaneous and parallel realities right now, me personally. How I'm doing this, I can explain if you want to learn more of me. Basically, what's happened is uh, a lot of people know I was in a property, and my property was my, um, at the start was my, I thought it was going to be my financial freedom, right? It was going to be the way, my vehicle for my financial freedom. Now, along the way, when I invested all my bricks, I met a lot of unsuccessful people, people that were desperate for money, people that were just taken from me, people that saw me as a vulnerable person. They did not know my power. They just thought of, oh, you know, poor thing, you know, let's help, but let's take something from us, from her. Now, this was a reality that I did not create, but because I was going through my awakening stages and I didn't know that I had to go through all this awareness and to have this acceptance who I really was, I kind of neglect myself, sabotage myself, and all the messages that I had this week, and I hope I can help some of you today, was about this. People are self-sabotaging. They live in anxiety, stress, worry, and they could not get out of this cycle. If you are one of them, you are not alone. That's why we teach, because by teaching, we also learning, okay? So if you are one of those people that message me every day and say, I can't seem to get out of this, I want to find a way, is when you actually need some extra help now. You are watching this for a reason, you are resonating, you are now aligning or aligning but you're not yet ascending. Although you think you are ascending, ascension is the last of what we call it the last stage. Because when you ascend, you understand your true power and you become more alignment with your higher self. It's when you start to create. It's when you start to understand who you truly are as a person, as a enormous giant force of creation. And a lot of us are stuck in the rut because of old programming. This is where the mind game really begin. When you understand that, you start, because I am in the middle of two different parallel realities at the moment. I go back to 3D when I need to deal with some situations that I, I know I'm going to get out of these situations and I'm getting out of these situations and I'm going to tell you how I'm doing it. First of all, feel no guilt, if I may, and I pray Joey allow me, feel no guilt in letting go. Anything that not serve you, anything this is not good for your highest potential, is not gonna do anything for your life, please believe me because I know it, let it go. I let go of a narcissist, I let go of Bill that should just take money from me, and I start to resonate, I jump a timeline, and I know that I could quit, I could give up and say, no, this is gonna be my financial freedom, but little I knew that I jumped timeline and there I am trying to coach people and I'm not a coach. <laughs> trying to teach people and I'm not a teacher. How I've done this, I've aligned with people who are my tribe, who are like-minded. There is a quote that everybody talks about, um, uh, Jake and, 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 and I've, I've, I've listened to him recently. Uh, Jim Rowe says, we are the average of the five people that we spend our time around. So if we are surrounded by unhealthy, unsuccessful, uh, losers, uh, sick people, <laughs> let's say it, I'm not criticizing, I'm not even judging, it's more likely that you're going to become unsuccessful, unhealthy, ill, grumpy, worried, stressed, name it. If you shift the timeline and think, okay, this is what the current situation is. I accept this, I am absorbing this, but I know this is not who I am because I'm not longer operating my lower version. I'm going to jump a timeline and say, I'm going to attract somebody that's going to help me to sort out this situation, somebody that think like me, someone that has the same goals, someone that believes in me, someone that have a dream like mine and never shattered my dream, you will more likely to be expecting to meet these people. 
Now, it's easy to say than done because a lot of us are trapped in the old jobs, okay? And a lot of messages this week, I'm not going to mention names, don't be, 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 be fine with it because I will not mention your names. Some of us, some of you reached out and say, how do you, gonna, how do, you do it, okay? And I said, simply, I am living it. The only difference is I, I am not stuck in there in my mind. In my mind, I'm aware of this timeline. Do I believe that I am there? No. Do I believe that I came out? I can come out of that? Yes. Why? Because I, my potential is not longer limited because of my old tribe. My potential now become my biggest potential. Now become more confident as I give these shows because although I'm a crap talker <laughs> and I'm no teacher, I become to know that a lot of people resonate with me. A lot of people want to learn of me and Joey and they want to learn from us. So we are not, me and Joey, not going to step back into what we've been before. In fact, sometimes we have to go through failures because like Ricky Godard said, failing is failing forward. So you go up and down and go up a little and come down a little. So you get stuck in the circle until you understand, um, until you get out of this toxicity that you've been dealing with all your life. If you are in your mind on that toxic environment and think, oh, I'm not going to get out of here, of course you're going to be stuck in there. But if you understand that this is just um, a program that wants you to, to get out completely in your mind, so you can jump your timeline and get out of that altogether, believe me, it's more likely you're going to get out because this is not where you're going to stay. Correct me if I'm right or if I'm wrong. If anybody wants to ask some questions, if you want to add up to, uh, to it, please. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And I love the idea of uh, feel no guilt. You know, the, the idea is that a true manifestation is a feeling and it's nothing external, you know, once we accept that the inner person, the inner man is controlling everything and not the outer person, the outer man, once you decree it to be so, once you believe it and feel it is true, your outside world will reflect the inside world. So knowing that it's an inside job, there is no guilt to be felt. This is only your ego that we're battling with, you know, and you said, uh, you're shifting timelines, whatnot. And it's it's really acknowledge, about acknowledging it again and being aware oh. of the possible or potential timeline. Whenever that thought pops into our mind, we can either be aware of the thought and know that the potential of that timeline to exist is, is there. But it's our conscious mm -hmm. thoughts. It's our conscious choice to actually follow that path or to get it, get off that path, let it go out into the universe, let it exist somewhere else. And I've said this before, not in my present timeline that does not exist. That bad thought, sure, it's existing somewhere on a different reality, on a different timeline. But in my version, it has no power. So that's the being aware of it and breaking yeah. free of those patterns, those thoughts that we have. We have to learn to follow our intuition more and let mm -hmm. that guide us to the reality, to the path we want to be on versus allowing our subconscious programming and those thoughts mm -hmm. and fears to guide us. That's what's holding us back from creating our reality more instantaneously or quicker. It slows down the process when we allow the subconscious mind and the fears to play a role in this and to have any kind of say in what we're doing. You know, does that make sense? Yeah. It, it does make sense. And to add to that, um, I, I recently been hearing to um, some of our spectacular uh, people from our group. They are giving so much value to myself even. And uh, one of the guys said, we never step back. Uh, we just grow and celebrate with our failures because failures are necessary to us to grow and to get out of our comfort zone. So when we on the stages of awakening, and a lot of people, majority of people, 100%, 200% positive, when they are awakened to the real understanding who they are, they reach rock bottom. And the reason they reach rock bottom is because they are now aware of their power. They are becoming to understand the five stages of the awakening. 
and they are in the acceptance stage always to understand after they accept they're no longer on those programs they've been taught from a uh, since they, they, they since the day they're born they now understand by stepping up these uh, and reaching these higher dimensions that people think is someone else or somewhere else these higher dimensions is all here those uh, dimensions are all within and we have to go to the stage of the action to to be aligned to be aware the awareness is the learning of the law of attraction when we learn when we are aware of uh, who we are then we become to understand the law of attraction i never knew anything about this i just knew that i have awakening and my life was going backwards and i was like oh my gosh why now that i'm such a good person i thought everything is crumbling on me a lot of you are resonating and i thank you for being on the show and i thank you for watching this because this is for you if you want help just reach out because you're just not awakening now you awaken like maybe during covid and you already passed that it's been two years already now you are on your awareness of who you truly are but you can't get out of this stage because sometimes some of us like me and joey we're not we don't need we don't say we don't need help we don't need as much we help each other out because now we are with alignment with everyone that we are dealing with me joey and our group we are completely aligned true or true so now we are on the stage of actioning who we are we are now stepping to our power and we are now moving forward so we learn the mechanism of uh, our higher self we we are learning how to operate in our highest version so we are learning everything that exists in to create our dreams and this is the stage of the awareness it doesn't mean that we already ascended because we have not completely 100 percent aligned but we are aligning with every single person that's coming <laughs> on our group, our network, because we already align with other people that we learn from. And now you guys are aligning with us because you want to learn from us so you can too become your best essence, your best divine that is hidden from you because you are thinking that is elsewhere, which is anywhere apart from in, correct? Correct, correct. <laughs> Uh, I wanted to touch on Steve is joining us today and he Hi, has, I, I know his journey. He's my father-in-law. So uh, ah, hello. the yeah. journey he's been on and it's, I'm actually going to get him on the show, the podcast one of these days because his journey Great. was such an amazing one and it kind of follows right in line. Uh, he mentioned in the comments here, uh, it, it follows right in line. Let me see. I'll show them uh, with that seven year cycle that I spoke about earlier. And, you know, he unexpectedly from out of nowhere in 2014, we get a call, we're on vacation and we get a call from out of nowhere that he just decided to retire one day from a job he'd been at for many, many years, you know, worked his way up and he just out of the blues, like I'm done, I'm retiring. And he shifted his entire reality for that next seven years. He became somebody different than what he'd always been in the past. Right. And kind of growing into his retirement, finding himself. And then in 2021, so seven years later is when he had his huge awakening and shift that I got to be a part of, and I got to help him with it. And I love the story. <laughs> yeah, it, it, we, we did a lot of work and for him, and I'll, we'll Get share his job. journey on the podcast more in depth, but for what happened to him, no, that's he got, he started to get into this manifesting power. He started to understand what he was capable of doing. And he was meditating. He was doing all the right steps. But where I think he, where he slipped just a little bit, and I did the same thing, was he got, he allowed in some dark energy that came and presented okay. itself as light. It presented itself as positive energy. And I, I could yeah. tell because I would have conversations with him. I could tell that the words he was speaking, they weren't his. They were, he was being channeled at times. 
And I could tell that what was coming through was literally in resistance to love and to light. It was a darkness, but I couldn't really understand it. And I was letting him kind of go through this process and learn it and kind of discover it on his own. And what he said was, let's see, he could have let this reality, the transformation drag into the dark side, but he chose to accept the positive side and to grow with it. And, and I know Steve, yeah, I heard the story. It was amazing. It was actually instantaneous. I mean, uh, he was, he got, in my belief, in my opinion, he was taken over by a dark energy that mm -hmm. was, that turned him upside down and became somebody mm -hmm. he wasn't. And that lasted for a few days. And I got to go up with the family and help guide him through this. And he had an episode. They call it a seizure. seizure. I recorded, <laughs> Do you remember how, I recorded how we connect? the whole thing. I've got it on Do you record. remember? What's Do you that? remember how do you remember how you and you start to connect really deep when Steve had this uh, uh, event in his life? Do you remember? We used to message his child and I used to give you so much. Right. Um, I was telling you, you about remember? what was happening and what I was experiencing and kind of seeing and yeah. go through. We connected deep there. That right. was the, the that was last year when we start to connect really on a deep level. When we me and you start to align on this new stage in our lives or the, the awareness and i said to you to remember you're going to be his greatest strength because you have the understanding to help him where nobody else at the time could help him correct do you remember correct yes absolutely i was put into his life at that moment in time to help him get through okay. that and to help him exactly. push through the the dark energy we got it out you know it i don't i can say what I believe happened and what I did and helped him through it. But at the end of the day, it was him that truly got through it. The work. You know, he yeah. had to do the work. I just work. helped open the door for him. And, you know, we've, we've talked and done a lot of work since then. And, you know, he very rarely even has to call me anymore to he call me now to tell me about the amazing well, things. Steve. Like, oh, I was meditating and this happened and that happened. And it's like, that's amazing. You know, I'm, I'm so proud of you. Whereas, you know, before he'd call and say, well, what, what is, what do you think's happening with this? And what are your thoughts on that? And now he's starting to really tune in and understand what he's going through. So it's, you he know. He should be very proud of himself. Oh, he's yeah. on the show today. Steve. Be very proud because what you've done, it was not Joey was just guiding you. You have been so lucky to have somebody like Joey, but everything was your account. It was you, your desire to get out of this that made you who you are today. So just give yourself a pat on the back because you are great and you're doing amazingly. I can't wait to hear your story on your podcast although i know it <laughs> let's say, you, yeah you know some of it but yeah I, I think he's he's gonna be ready here pretty soon to share the whole story and exactly what happened because it it's pretty amazing what actually happened i and again it's one of those i wouldn't have believed it had i not gone through it and experienced it and it was everything happened the way it had to and now the person he is today is truly one of enlightenment and he's 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 progressing so much faster than even i was you know so i'm so happy i'm so proud of him watching where he's going with it so well done steve well, well done steve i believe all these uh, different versions of you and all different versions of your multi-dimensional soul they had to come out while you have this uh processing because Ultimately, a lot of people are not aware of this because I, I hear a lot of Brian Scott lectures and I learn a lot with Brian because Brian is our link. Let's say Brian is our link. He linked uh, energetically and holographic to everyone that uh, every one of us that are now doing these shows. OK, so I believe on a multidimensional level and soul level, Steve, this dark energy that uh, it came into you had to be worked for a reason. So nothing is uh, for a coincidence. On your quantum field, there was a lot of different timelines uh, that exist and still exist there, but you have to deal with them. And for everyone or anyone that are trying to jump timelines, 
believe me, you're going to have your darkest moments yourself. You just don't think, oh, I'm going to wish this and I'm going to create that and everything's going to be perfect. You have to manage yourself on your darkest of the dark so your light can shine. Because ultimately, it's hell and heaven. And you create whatever you think you can. Uh, Steve could go the other way. He could give himself to these dark entities and say, I'm going to still um, operate from this uh, multidimensional soul of fear, let's say, or of uh, not understanding or uh, evil. But he decides to come out. First of all, he had your guidance, which was a massive help. A credit to you, obviously, that he came out of the other side. But if we don't understand that everything exists in different timelines and parallel and higher dimensions, we would never understand anything about ourselves because everything exists simultaneously. And this is why we say jumping timelines is not that difficult. It's easy to be stuck in there and in a program that is not an acceptance. When you awaken, you can just stay there, awaken, and that's it. It's like you become dormant because you now understand that you have a spiritual awakening, but you're not doing anything with it. So you're still on your program and just say, oh, because I see that a lot. Let me rephrase again. I see that a lot. And I probably was one of them for two years. I was like just not doing much on scrolling through Facebook. Am I being productive? No. Spiritual awakening people being productive? Probably most of them know. I'm sorry if I'm offending anybody, but you're not stepping into your power. You're just scrolling along and you say, now you're spiritual, but you're just that. You're just on your awakening stages. You're not accepting who you are. You're not aligning uh, uh, align, uh, who, who you are. You're not becoming your true potential uh, to your highest version. So you're not ascending. You're just like there doing nothing all day long and not being productive. And I become spiritual ignorant by doing that myself. It was not until I understood that, yes, I've got weakness, yes, I'm not good at everything, but I don't have to be. I mentioned many times before, when we jump into timelines, my, um, I don't know how you call it, it, it <laughs> helped me with my part of the brain that is the thinking brain, which is the, how you call it, the thinking brain? The conscious? Or... The, it, it's, it is a name I can't say. It. Dr. Joseph Spencer tells me a lot about this, but I can't memorize. So the, my thinking brain, okay, tells me that now that you are aware that you have your awakening, what are you going to do about it, darling? Are you going to sit around all day and say, oh, yeah, I'm spiritual? No. Step out of your comfort zone. Get out there and teach people because these people, they're all powerful. They're all creators. They just don't know how to use it. And that's why they come to me privately and say, oh, can you help me? I can't help everybody in one go, in one message, because otherwise I'll be messaging all day long, not doing anything, and not getting paid. So basically what we do in our Q&A sessions every Tuesday is to help you understand that you two are enormous, powerful creation. You just have to step out of your comfort zone and stop feeling sorry for yourself, because I have many reasons to keep feeling sorry for myself. My life has gone completely crushing and i when i if i could mention some names of people that are aware of my situation where i live i am there but i'm jumping timelines and i say i'm here but i'm not i shift that because i'm not longer my lower version and i know i will cross lines with people that operate in my higher version they're going to help me to get out of the situation that i no longer resonate with if that makes sense. So if that's you, you need coaching, you need help, you need assistance, let's say, just don't be on the awakening stage. The awakening stage happened through the COVID for a lot of people, it's happening right now to a lot of more people, and they just don't know anything what to do with it. Just say, oh, I become spiritual, yeah, I'm good. No, you're not good. Believe me, you're not good. You just, just dip in the surface of truly who you are, but you need to understand more of it, if that makes sense, Joey. Yes, sense? yes. And Steve responded saying, his next step is to present my enlightenment to the awakened consciousness. So well done, Steve. I think that's something that once we hit, once we jump on that timeline, once we shift that reality into being awoke, one, we can't be put back to sleep because now we nope. know and we see what's... Never go back. 
what the uh, options are, you know, what, what we're capable of. We see that yeah. it's hard to then sit back and not want to share what we've discovered sure. because that, exactly. that's really all it is. I'm sharing, you're sharing, Steve's sharing. We're all just sharing our own experiences here of how we became yeah. to understand this, this power that we have. So let's let's talk a little bit about before we get to the end of the hour here. You know, yeah. what are some of the steps? What are some of the techniques people can do to help them shift realities, to help them shift timelines? You know, is it for me, I've done it instantly on many occasions, not knowing, not not being aware of it in the moment. But, you know, for me, I've gone to I've, I've lost three, four hours in the mornings, you know, of I wake up, I start my morning routine at let's say 5 a.m. specifically on one day, I remember, and 9, 10 o'clock rolls around and I'm looking at the clock like, what the hell just happened? Where have I been for the last four hours? What what have I done? And I try to go back and I try and remember and like recollect exactly what I did. And it's like, okay, that doesn't make any sense. I'm missing like two hours of time. Where the hell did it go? You know, so mm -hmm. that for me. Procrastinated. Huh? Procrastinated. Procrastinating, but that, I don't know where that time went. It wasn't as if I was just not doing anything. It's just as right. if uh -huh. I woke up at five. I started doing my daily routine. And from oh, okay, 6 o'clock till 9 a.m. for like a three-hour time frame, it's like, I almost went someplace else. I wasn't ah, here because okay. literally it, okay. I couldn't remember what the heck happened. I was awake. I was okay. doing whatever. But was I consciously or subconsciously shifted into a different state, into a different timeline? Was I in between timelines? You know, for me, I, I had one time a couple of years ago, I was attacked by a dark, you know, negative entity. And it actually kicked my butt. It physically beat me up and I've got pictures of it. I'll show one of these days. I'll do a show on it, uh, <laughs> but it cut my face all up. It really, it kicked my butt. And that was, that morning was similar. Like I'd gotten up 5 a.m. I'm doing my normal routine and the whole morning was like a blur when I thought back on it. It's like, I didn't know where I was. I, was I in between you know, timelines, whatever it happened, I'd opened a door, possibly a portal. And that negative entity came in. And the second I started to meditate that morning, I got 30 seconds into my meditation and it attacked me and physically beat me up. My wife came upstairs. She was in the basement workings like, what the hell just happened? What was that? It sounded like a freight train ran into the side of our house. The whole house shook. And I'm like, I don't <laughs> even know what happened. I just... I got up when I came to and my face was all bloody and the worst wow. thing in my head. And it's like I, I got attacked. But where did I go for that couple hours before that? You know, so I sorry, got off on a got off on a kind of a tangent there, you know, from the my original thought was how do we how do we control this? How do we do this? You know, and my thought is that a lot of it starts with our meditating. A lot of it starts with going inside quieting the mind allowing yeah. allowing the energy allowing that frequency to come into us and that's a spot mm -hmm. that gets gets difficult for some people because if we don't know how to protect ourselves that dark energy can come in and it will Let it'll show itself as light it'll trick us into believing it's here to help when really it's here to take us on a different reality a different timeline one of its choosing because it's a manipulation is what the negative, what the dark is. So how, how do we how do we control this conscious creation of shifting reality? Just have to, uh, I don't know how many people are uh, here today. I don't know how many people is interested in this uh, engagement today. I haven't had any, um, uh, I don't know if people have asked questions so far, but no, I, no I want to tell you. Yet, but. That's fine. I want to tell you how I'm jumping timelines and I'm saying how I am jumping right because i am this at the moment living in two parallel realities myself okay one of is the liliana that everybody knew before beforehand everybody knows that liliana used to work 100 times you know 100 hours a week 
Liliana was very compassionate, Liliana was being super helpful, Liliana's done everything for everyone, but that Liliana forgot about herself. Now, when Liliana had the awakening and understood that she could jump into timelines and she knew their higher self power was not actually operating, Liliana decided to do some steps. Now, the steps was, like Joey said, I have a normal routine, a, a routine that was going to give me a, a higher sense of satisfaction to myself, okay? I'm sorry about my English is not the best, but I want to become super satisfied with my life. Now, I have times in my house when I cry like no one, like a child, because the realities that I'm facing sometimes are not the realities that I, I see myself in. So when I say we jump in timelines, or Liliana jump in timelines, is when Liliana stop giving feed to those energies that do not match her energy, which is my energy is precious, I am vibrating a higher frequency, and I do not longer operate, work, or engage with people that make me feel small. It doesn't matter if you are a single woman or whatever, because I've been taking advantage for so long for so many people, especially in the last seven years. I can say it to you by now. And more in force, the last four years, I was taking advantage from everything and everyone. We're talking about a relationship, builders, people that, I, um, you know, take my energy, asking me for favors, all this and all the other. Now, how I'm jumping this timeline? You start like me. You say no to anything that is not making you feel you. You say no to everyone that makes you anxious. You say no to everyone that doesn't believe in you. You say no to everybody that's trying to shatter your dreams because these people live in a different vibration altogether. They live in a frequency that is lower and they don't want you to shine because they already sense that you have a light. They already sense that your soul has a feeling and a light into something deeper. And they cannot get it. And they don't want you to get there because it's so easy for us to be evil. And But honesty always prevails. Honesty always wins. And if you vibrate at your higher frequency, which is being honest, kind, generous, but kind to yourself. Lillian is now kind to herself. Lillian is attracting more people that are kinder, kinder to Liliana. And that's the Liliana she wants to be. She wants to be in this high frequency where uh, Lillian is going to help more people to become higher frequency beings, step into the higher power, into their higher self. If you think you want to learn more from Liliana, how to step into your power, reach out to reality practice because we are here to help you just to do that, this and to do that. When I stop saying no, to those losers, to those people that make me feel small, make me feel bad, just take it from me and make me lose my power, then I jumped in a different timeline altogether. Hmm. And this is my prime example, my secret. Then you write your goals, you do not quit. Remember, sometimes you have to crumble. That's part of the awakening. Sometimes you say, oh, I don't want to lose this money. Sometimes. Liliana has to lose this money. Why? Because what is to come is better than what you lost. Yes, I lost something. Maybe I lost me. I lost some investments. I lost. But you know what I'm gaining? A higher investment. A profession that I never thought I could do. Uh, 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 help. Humanity help. I am working with people. I'm helping people. And that satisfaction is higher than any profession I ever had. And you ask me now, is your profession paid? Yes, we're working towards that now. We're working towards this global program that we are to put all together to help you and to help us and to help everybody. If you help one soul each day, one soul at a time, you're already changing the world. Mm -hmm. So do not be afraid of stepping into your power. What you lose, compare what you gain, it's nothing. Because a lot of people are trapped. Oh, I don't like my job. I get this message every day. I don't like my job. I feel I'm trapped. Uh, yeah, I feel trapped with a lot of things in my life. But you know what? I let go because I'm now aware that I cannot steal on my awakening stages no more. Those stages are the beginning of my cycle two years ago. I'm not longer that person. I am in alignment with a lot of attraction because I am ascending. If you are resonating and if you're not resonating, 
if you want to learn more, reach out. That's what we're here for, to help you. <laughs> I think you, you hit the nail on the head there, and I made a note of it. It's all about taking control of your power. Yeah. Taking it yeah. back, realizing we have this power, recognizing that we are the ones in control if we want to be in control. And it doesn't matter if you lose. Shift, yes. How do we shift that timeline? We take control of the timeline. We no yeah. longer allow our subconscious mind to just unconsciously push us down a path, whichever one we want. We have to see the path. We have to see the end. We have to have a vivid, clear direction you know, of where we're headed and consciously mm -hmm. shift there, consciously move into that state instead of just allowing the world to happen to us. We have power. We take back that power. Yeah. And I think you're, you're, you hit the nail on the head with it. We need to know where we're headed, use that power and just embrace it. And don't be afraid of it. Things are going to happen. Be Things are going to happen. So we're still, we're still not in full control of our subconscious minds. So no, those dark demons are going to pop up. That's why healing is so yeah. important. We have to heal mm -hmm. those dark spots yeah. in our minds, mm -hmm. those memories, because those will, even though you can be the most in control of your thoughts and the direction you're heading, every once in a while, those little demons, those dark spots are going to pop back up subconsciously and they're going to try and throw us off the path. They want to get us on their timeline and manipulate us and, into doing their bidding versus being in a realm of free will. We live in a free will that, universe. We get to choose and most people, path, right? And yeah, and most people will get stuck. Believe me. People say, oh, yeah, I'm going to jump in the timeline. This is everything that's going to be perfect. I'm going to tell you from experience because I only speak from experience. You will get stuck. And I wrote down, we get stuck in the cycle until we understand this, until we get all the toxicity out of our lives. It's important. When we talk about toxic people, we think that everybody is a version of ourselves. Yes, they are, but they are on their path. Remember, everybody's on that path. Not everybody's aligned to you right now. So just get out of this immense love that you're born with that you can't remember. You just love an energy and you just don't remember all this. And you think, oh, but I love everyone now and I'm spiritual. Yes, but some people are going to set you right back because your mind it keeps you stuck there until you understand your power needs to align with people that think like you. You will find your tribe, and this is how you find us. We are your tribe right now, guys. We are the ones who want to help you unblock those belief systems that you have for donkey years, and you just don't know how to get out of them because the fear kicks in, and you are giving every single time to fear. Last week, I was in a state of, honestly, you could ask anybody that knows me that I was in a state. But I've done, I just put myself in a meditation state. I put my hand on my heart, and the other hand in here on my stomach which is my second brain. And I said, you know what? I don't live here anymore. I know that I'm here, but I don't live here. I'm out of here. Instantly, next day, I woke up a different person. Do you think that things will go away because of uh, your state? They don't go away, but they just become easier. And you get people in your, in your path that are helping you to unblock these little issues that you might have or going on. So I'm speaking from experience, guys, and I know for sure in a year from now, you're going to see a total different version of me because I'm creating this. And with the show, I'm going to leave you because we are ending. With this jumping timelines, is easy. It's just programming. Don't let yourself be self-sabotaging. Get out of there. And if you can't help it, reach how we call programs and packages to help you all. Thank you. Well said. Well said. Hey, as we're uh, wrapping up here, we're on the last minute or so. I wanted to thank everybody for watching this week. As always, we love your comments. We love your questions. Uh, to leave off with, I, I want to just remind everybody, we are getting ready this week to enter into an insanely energetic next about seven to 10 days. It is going to be massive and mind blowing. We're going to have planets in alignment that haven't been in alignment for hundreds of years. The frequency and the energies are going to be very yeah. strong. Um, and with that being said, 
understand and know that over the course of the next week, a lot is going to be revealed to us and there yep. are going to be some major, major world changing things happening this week, according to yep. the timeline we're on right now. So just be Life conscious is- and be aware of the manipulation and the propagating of fear. That is going to yeah. be their main weapon that they're going to try and use over the next week against us. We have to stay strong. Yeah. We have to know that the light and that love is overcoming the darkness that's out there. It's it's already been defeated. The end is yeah. near. Just be ready. Be prepared. This Just week is going to be explosive on all levels. But you have to realize that it's coming from within us. And we have to yep. keep our energy in check. If you're tired, if you need to rest, get your rest. Yep. Drink plenty of water. Yep. Hydrate and nourish your body. Meditate. Do everything you can to take care of yourself over the next week until we talk again, because it's going to be a roller coaster for the next few days. Don't so give yourself into fear. fear. Yeah. What's that? Don't give yourself. Don't give yourself into fear, guys. It's goes so easy to do it. Just, just try. Try harder. Just try harder. It's so easy to give ourselves into fear. Shut down. Shut down anything. Do not give any attention. Do not give your time and your energy to anything on the television or on the internet that is not resonating with you. If it's It's bringing you down, if it's taking you into a state of fear and lowering your vibration, turn it off. Give it no attention. (laughs) Choose what you give your attention to. Put the thoughts in your mind that you choose to have play themselves out and allow that to happen. So that's all we got this week for you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you, and until next time, stay blessed. And remember to always ask yourself, what reality are you choosing to create today? Bye now. Thank you, Joey. Thank you, guys. We love you. Bye, Thank you. Until next Tuesday. Bye-bye.